Good morning, everyone. It's a privilege to be up here. And I love this time of year. There are so many reasons why I love this time of year. Let me go over just a few of them. There's the pretty decorations and all the colorful lights everywhere, inside and outside of homes. I love that. We get to sing traditional Christmas songs, Christmas carols, like we just did. I love that. There always seems to be an ample supply of hot cocoa and cookies. My belly likes that. And then, of course, we have the Charlie Brown Christmas special to watch. That's always a good one. So those are just a few of my favorite things about Christmas. And I'm sure you have many other traditions and likes that I haven't mentioned. However, there is a downside to this season that we've created in our culture. I don't think it's a surprise that we can get so caught up with the events of this season. All the get-togethers, all the parties, all the gift-giving, and we can get so stressed out doing all these traditions and celebrations that oftentimes Christmas just seems to pass us by. So many of us overextend ourselves at this time of year that we may miss the true meaning of Christmas. I said this last week, but I'm going to repeat it again. How messed up is that that oftentimes we fail to invite Christ to his own birthday party? That shouldn't be. But you know what, though? That's not merely just a modern problem in our world. That's not just our issue today. Many people at the time of his birth missed Christ too. When the first Christmas happened in Bethlehem, almost no one took notice. So to start things off here, turn with me, if you will, to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. There's some Bibles at the bottom of your seats. You can get there on your phone. Luke 2. Now, Pastor Dan went over a bunch of these verses last week, but we're going to start off this morning by looking at verse 7 specifically. And we're going to highlight how Christ was essentially missed. So Luke chapter 2, verse 7. Here's what it says. And she, Mary gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in cloths. And she laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So as I was going over this, the first big question in my mind is, where was everyone else? Where were all the other people? I mean, surely people saw that Mary was very far along with child and was ready to give birth at any moment. They most certainly heard the pain and agony that Mary went through to deliver her baby. So where was everyone else to help assist here? The text says that she brought forth her son. And it also says that she wrapped him in cloth. She laid him in a manger. So it doesn't appear to be any midwife here to assist with the delivery, to clean off the baby, nothing. Mary did all this. So in a lot of ways, this was a lonely birth. Again, surely there were other people that were near to this location when Jesus was born. They had to have seen Mary. They had to have heard Mary. They had to have heard the newborn baby crying. But for some reason, they didn't come. They missed this birth. The birth. How did they miss that? Why did they miss that? I think the answer is simple. They were busy. There was a lot going on, as we know, in the city of Bethlehem with the census. The city was bursting with people trying to get back to their family's 
birthplace? That being said, I don't think the people of Bethlehem were hostile. I don't think they were unloving. I don't think they were unsympathetic to a very expectant woman here. They were just preoccupied with a lot of busyness. And from our perspective now, we see that they were busy with things that really didn't matter much in the whole scheme of things. They were all busy doing their own thing. And they missed the coming of Christ. We have the luxury of looking back now and we can't believe they missed that. What a tragedy we think. What a shame we say. We would have known better, right? I'm not so sure. What about us? What about us this Christmas? We tend to be so busy with our time and so many things going on at this time of year. What do we want? How are we going to get it? How are we going to take care of it? How are we going to store it? How are we going to wrap it? And then what about all the parties and get-togethers? all the presents, all or everything that in the end may not really amount to anything at the heart and soul level with our relationship with our Savior. So many times we are so busy, we are so preoccupied with our own stuff, with our own things, with our own plans, that we squeeze out recognizing and honoring Jesus' first coming to earth, to save us from ourselves. We miss Christmas. But you know what might even be worse than being too busy for Christ? I think it's being indifferent to Christ. Let's quickly look back at the Gospel of Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 6. Matthew 2, verses 1 through 6. Here's what it says. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east, and we've come to worship him. And when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Verse 4, Gathering together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So Herod here had gathered all the religious experts together. All the great minds who were well-versed. They knew all the scriptures. They knew the prophecy. They were all called together to one meeting with Herod. And all these priests and all these theological leaders, they spoke to Herod and they were very honest with him. And they said the Messiah is going to come from Bethlehem. So they were quoting Micah chapter 5. But let's think about this now. With this fantastic news from the wise men, the Magi, the Jewish religious leaders did not even bother to go to Bethlehem to check it out. 
That's shocking to me. Because this event was what all the Jews had been waiting for. The coming Messiah who would eventually deliver them out of their oppression. And the faith leaders of the land did not even bother to travel the measly couple miles from Jerusalem to Bethlehem to check it out. Why didn't they? Why didn't they care to check this out? They weren't too busy, not in this case. I just think they could really care less because they thought they had their act together already. In their minds, it seemed like they were already self-righteous. They were already perfect and following all their man-made laws and rules to God. In fact, they were not wrecked in their heart and soul over their own filthiness. In fact, it appears that they, were, they willfully chose not even to contemplate their filthiness. You've got to remember something. These were the pastors here. I believe they felt like they didn't really need to be saved because they were saving themselves already. And that type of indifference, that's a huge insult to God. There are many people today who miss Christmas because of their indifference. They ignore Christ because they refuse to admit their sin. They don't care about the Savior because they think they don't need a Savior. They don't think about the fact that sin equals death. And spiritual death eventually leads to eternal death. And at the completion of this all, at the, at the end of it all, eternal death really means eternal separation from God. So we have two problems going on here. The first one is, many people miss Christmas because of being overly busy. And number two, on the flip side of that coin, so many people miss Christmas because of being pridefully indifferent. Both are so damaging because they can... It can sear our hearts. It can harden our hearts to this. And that ultimately results in us not being ready when Christ returns again at His second coming. Christ is coming again soon. We don't know when exactly, but we do know that it's certain our Lord will return and we will all stand before Him. So if we have any regard for our faith, for our relationship with Jesus Christ, I think we should be concerned with the following question. How can we be ready for His second coming? How can we be ready? I'm going to read out of the Gospel of Luke. We're going to go back to Luke now, chapter 12, verses 35 through 40, to answer this question. So Luke 12, 35 through 40. Jesus is directly talking about being ready for His return here in this parable. Luke 12, starting with verse 35. Be dressed in readiness. And keep your lamps lit. Be like men who are waiting for their master when he returns from the wedding feast, so that they may immediately open the door to him when he comes and knocks. Verse 37 
Blessed are those slaves from, the, from whom the master will find on the alert when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will gird himself to serve and have them recline at the table and will come up and wait on them. Whether he comes in the second watch or even the third and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have allowed his house to be broken into. You too, be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. So we have four picture stories here going on in this parable. The first one is to be dressed in readiness. Back in the day, they all wore the long robes. And if one planned to work or run or do any type of physical movement, they had to tuck their robe into their waist so that it would not interfere with their movements. This is telling us as servants we are to be in a state of readiness and be prepared for action at a moment's notice. Dressed in readiness for Christ. That's the first picture. The second picture here is to keep your lamps lit. Now obviously they had no electricity back then, so there were no street lights to help them find their way at night. So if a servant was expecting a visitor at dark, they would have to keep an oil lamp burning so that when the knock on the door came, they could be immediately ready to open the door and not have to fumble. So keep your lamps lit. For Christ. The third picture is awaiting the master's return from the feast. Wedding parties in these days could last for days, even up to a whole entire week. And the servants would need to be ready for when they heard their master arrive to open the door and to start serving their master. So we are to be ready and waiting for Christ. And finally, the fourth picture here in this parable is the thief breaking into the house in the middle of the night. This relates directly to Revelation. Revelation chapter 3, verse 3. Here's what that says. I'll read it for you. It says, Therefore, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. So Jesus here is telling us to be prepared because His second coming will be at an unexpected hour. So we should be alert and we should be ready at any moment. Now clearly here, Christ is our Master. We are the servants. And if we claim to know Christ as our Savior, then there's no way we should be too busy. There's no way we should be indifferent in our lives. There's no way we should be indifferent, let me say it like this, to a sin pattern in our life. We should not be able to just shrug off sin on our own like it's no big deal. We shouldn't be comfortable and we shouldn't be okay with that. The only way we're going to be ready for Christ's second coming is to daily seek Him in every area of our life under His domain and within His boundaries. So getting personal for me, being a servant of Christ means Christ is first and foremost involved in everything I do. 
My specific ministry right now is to be a pastor, a leader, and a shepherd. But there are only so many hours in a week that I can officially do that. But here's the thing. I'm still a servant of Him 24-7. So whether I'm pastoring, or whether I'm shopping at Walmart, or all these, or whether I'm shoveling snow, or whether I'm hanging out with my family and friends, I am always a servant of Christ. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says this, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. So this Christmas season, amongst all the good celebrations, all the healthy get-togethers, all the exciting events, are we making room for Christ? Or are we just missing it, maybe, and spiritually sleeping through it? Are we overly busy with not including Christ and our Christmas? It almost seems silly to say out loud, but I have to say it to myself. Even worse, are we indifferent to the birth of Christ? Or jaded to His birth? Think about that. And if you're ready, let's take, a, let's take a step past Christmas now, okay? Are we ready for Christ's second coming? Let me ask this to all of us. If Christ came today, would we be satisfied with how we've lived our life for Him? How well are we living out our commitment to Christ today in this season? Would we be comfortable if He had come back during our activities this past year? Or this past weekend? Or even from our activities from yesterday? Jesus says that we should be ready to immediately open the door to Him. Immediately. We shouldn't have to first yell, just a minute, Lord. Give me a few minutes. I'll be right there. Whatever our excuses are for not being ready for Christmas or for not being ready for Christ's return, the good news is that we can open our hearts to Christ right now. And we can freshly believe in the truth of who Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ is salvation. He's redemption. Jesus Christ is reconciliation. He's our forgiveness. Jesus Christ is our justification. He's our sanctification. Jesus Christ is our victory over sin, and He's our victory over the devil. And Jesus Christ is our core. He's the center of everything in our lives. And that right there is exactly what we celebrate and we remember at Christmas. And that's exactly also what we look forward to at His second coming. So let's not miss Christ this Christmas. And let's not miss being ready for Christ when He returns 
at his second coming. Let's not miss it. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray that today is the day that we open our hearts to you more fully. That we would believe you and that we would receive you deeper today. Lord, take our life, forgive us of our sins, and be our Savior. Lord, that's why you came here to this earth. That's why we remember and we celebrate your birth at Christmas time. Jesus, we pray for repentance right now and being too busy for you at times. We pray for repentance of being indifferent to you sometimes. Lord, and we pray for repentance right now for maybe not being ready for your return. I pray we properly praise you this next week here leading up to when we celebrate your birth. Lord, we want to live our lives for you today. We want to live our lives for you this Christmas season. And Lord, we want to live our lives for you every single day of our lives until you call us home. It's in Jesus Christ we pray these things. Amen.